The quadrature of sphere circuit is shown here constructed using just two ideal op amps and single supply. As you can see, the single supply is used for both op amps and at the same time, the DC over two is used to bias the input terminals of the op amp properly so that the op amp with single supply can work. Okay, so with that in mind, now I am going to focus on the loop gain in this system uh, if we are supposed to have a stable oscillation. So there are two outputs, V out sine and V out cosine, as you can see, with 90 degree phase shift. If the, if the oscillation is a stable, then the frequency of oscillation, F of oscillation, is how much? And it's the same for both of them. Now, let's start from V out sine at this point. And as you can see, we get from that point to the positive input terminal of op amp. So that's one route we go. From there, from positive input of terminal of op amp, we get to V out cosine, this point, and that point exactly this point. And then from this point, we will get back to V out sine. So that's the traverse. That's the path of the loop that we are traversing through. And uh, we want to make sure that through this loop, the gain is one if you're supposed to have a stable oscillation. Okay. So how does it work? The way it works is like this. So from V out sine to positive input terminal of op amp two is just a simple voltage division between R2, C2. So what I can write is, I can write V positive terminal that op for op amp number two is equal to a simple voltage division between C2 and R2 in the form of one over C2S divided by R2 plus one over C2S times, of course, a V out sign which is the input to the whole process okay so if we just clean this up what i get is i get this i get v positive at for input terminal of op amp 2 is equal to 1 over 1 plus r2 c2 s times v out sign so let's name this as equation number one okay great now, for traversing from, say, uh, now, uh, positive input terminal of op amp 2 to V cosine at its output, we are dealing with a scheme that is a non-inverting amplifier scheme. So we have op amp 2, like this, and we have the input terminal as our input voltage, which is V positive 2, and then the negative terminal via C3 is connected back to the output which is our V out cosine, and then VR3, VR connected to AC ground, because that is VC over two, uh, as you can see, and that VC over two is simply just AC wise ground. Okay, so with that in mind, uh, here in this circuit, uh, things are straightforward in the sense that I can just, um, I can just write, I can just write a very simple, let's say, uh, non-inverting amplifier that is well known. So from V plus to V, v out, I can write it is equal to one plus the impedance of the loop of the feedback, which is impedance of C3, which is one over C3S, divided by R3 times V plus two, the input to the whole thing, which if you simplify this, it become one plus R3 C3S divided by R3 C3S times V plus op amp 2. So let's name this as equation 2. And this equation is relating V plus to V out. So let's be uh, careful what is related to what. From VOS, we got to V plus. From V plus, we got to VOC. And then the last step is this VOC that you see it here is via this wire, via this wire, via this wire, it is here. Okay, so what do we have? At this node, we have, um, let me make sure that we can see it. At this node, we have, we have V out C at the input of that R1. And when you look at this circuit here, basically, when you look at this circuit, it is just an inverting amplifier scenario. So what I need to do is just form the inverting amplifier, just to illustrate it. So we have op amp one, 
we have positive input terminal connected to VCC over 2, which is AC ground. And negative input terminal is connected to C1. And then from C1, we go to V out. And then V out is V out sign. And then from there, we have R1, which is connected to V out cosine. So the gain from input to output in this inverting out the far scenario is super straightforward. As is well known, we can write that V out sine is equal to negative. Uh, the feedback impedance, which is the impedance of C1, 1 over C1s, divide by. Uh, to avoid confusion, let me make sure that I am using a better color. So I'm going to use this color, minus 1 over C1s, divide by R1, times V out cosine. So as a result, what I get is V out sine is equal to negative 1 over R1, C1, S, V out, cosine. Okay, this is equation number three. So now we have all everything uh, at our hand. So remember, from V out, S, via equation one, we got to V plus two. From V plus two, we, get to, we got to VOC via equation two. And finally, from VOC, we are back to V out sine in equation three. That completes our loop. So we have to have this overall loop gain equal to 1. What are the components in this loop gain? The components are this part. Uh, let me use a different color. So this part, this is 1. The other one is this one. And finally, the last one is this one. So the product of all we need to do is the product of 1, 2, and 3 should be equal to 1. Basically, loop gain for a stable oscillation should be equal to 1. So what is this? What is the meaning of this? It means that, of course, when S is equal to J omega oscillation at the frequency of oscillation. So uh, when we set omega, and uh, just to make life easy, let me write it this way. I'm going to make an assumption to just uh, practically finalize the problem. So that's from 3, and then from 2 we have... 1 plus R3, C3, J omega, and R3, C3, J omega. And finally, from 1, we have 1 over 1 plus R1, R2, C2, J omega. And this whole thing should be equal to 1. And omega is omega of oscillation, omega 0. So whenever you see omega, I'm referring to omega 0. Now, I'm going to make a practical assumption here. That practical assumption is as simple as this. I'm going to make the assumption uh, so that uh, R1, C1 is set to be equal to R2, C2 is set to be equal to R3, C3. If that is the case, which is a reasonable assumption to make, of course, in practice, we need to be careful to enforce it. Uh, so then, because of this assumption, you can see that this numerator, this denominator, it remains, but this denominator becomes exactly equal to this numerator. So they cancel out each other when we set R3C3 equal to R2C2. And as a result, what remains here with this assumption, what remains in the equation is effectively just one, minus 1 over RCJ omega times this component here, another 1 over R. C, R, C, J omega. So to finalize the whole problem, and this is equal to 1. So to finalize the whole problem, what I get is uh, negative 1 over R square, C square, and then J omega square is equal to 1. And J square is negative 1. Therefore, from this whole process, what I learn is this. Um, what I get from from this, of course, it means omega of oscillation. Let's not forget about that. And from this, what I get is omega of oscillation is equal to 1 over RC with this assumption, or basically because uh, F of oscillation is simply equal to 2 pi, so is simply equal to omega of oscillation divide by 2 pi. Therefore, we can say f of oscillation is equal to 
1 over 2 pi rc. So that is the last step I wanted to get to. Basically, with the simplifications that we made in this circuit and assumptions, then for this ideal circuit, we got to the point that the omega of oscillation should be equal to rc, and we found the frequency of oscillation. I hope that this example is helpful.